Moving on now to the Philippines, where the founder of a rebel group is wanted by both the Filipino government and the group's own members. The Moro National Liberation Front, or MNLF, was established by university professor Noor Miswari. He's been on the run since last month when more than 400 MNLF rebels under his command clashed with government troops, breaking a peace deal that had ended decades of fighting. Here's our contributor, Noel Terrazona. Filipinos are still recovering from the trauma after the Philippine soldiers battled these MNLF rebels for three weeks in this Boston city. The armed engagement caused the burning of more than 9,000 houses that displaced around 120,000 civilians caught in the crossfire. The United Nations declared a humanitarian crisis in Zamboanga. Police authorities served the warrant of arrest at the residence of MNLF leader Nurmiz Wari, but he was nowhere to be found. Some Filipino netizens believe the government should go further, like this net user who wrote, Why arrest him? He is a terrorist. Just shoot him. Moreover, this net user believes that Ms. Wari should have life sentence, as he wrote. This lunatic Ms. Wari should rot in jail. However, some net users want negotiations, not punishment. Hey mate, can we suspend that arrest order but go for ceasefire instead? Another net user wrote, you cannot arrest Ms. Wari because Ms. Wari is a respected sultan of the Bangsamoro and he has diplomatic immunity. What will happen to the 1996 peace deal is a question raised by most Filipinos after this violent siege. Is it still possible for the government and MNLF to go back to the negotiating table? Or will the government use an iron hand this time in dealing with the MNLF? In Zamboanga City, I'm Noel Tarazona for Link Asia. And in Malaysia, a court has ruled that use of the word Allah should only be used by Muslims. This week, supporters demonstrated outside the courtroom. Three Muslim judges in Malaysia's appeals court overturned a 2009 ruling that allowed a Catholic newspaper to use the word Allah in its Malay language publication. Religious leaders argue that Allah is not solely used by Muslims. God is an integral part of every religion we have. And Allah is a term. In, in the Middle East and in Indonesia, it is a term that is used by both Christians and, and Muslims. And so you cannot, you cannot say that it, all of a sudden it, it is not an integral part. Malay language is a language that has many borrowed words. Allah itself is a borrowed word. The Malaysian government says use of the term Allah by non-Muslims would confuse Muslims and could be used to convert them to other religions. To India now, the country's attention is gripped by a terrible case of child abuse. The kidnapping, rape and murder of a five-year-old girl in New Delhi last spring drew attention to a huge problem. Some reports estimate 7,200 children are sexually assaulted every year in India. Most assaults occur at home, in school and in orphanages. Many are never reported and Human Rights Watch says that complaints by children are often ignored or dismissed. Largely, we found, find that even when there is sexual abuse, quite often there's a tendency not to say. Part of it is stigma, part of it is because uh, there are, you know, there is dependency. You know, quite often the victim doesn't, if the perpetrator is someone more powerful, they're very worried about reprisals. One head of an NGO that deals with children's issues says there's a mindset developing where perpetrators of abuse feel that children are easier to target because India's women are standing up against assault. Now on U.S. Airwaves, a global channel of uncompromising stories. World News documentaries, entertainment, and culture. Link TV, connecting you to the world. For more information, visit linktv.org.